We're going down memory lane with this $500 gaming PC build because we're using a color scheme that is seriously underrated and I haven't used it in a long time. And also this graphics card is pretty special to me. In this video, I'll explain all of the parts inside of here and exactly how to copy it for yourself. We'll talk about how this GPU triggers my old man war stories. And then of course we'll benchmark it and see how well it dominates 1080p gaming on a budget. All of that after a quick word from today's sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by GVG Mall and you probably already know that that I've been using them for so long to activate Windows on a ton of my own builds. They're actually running a huge sale right now which boosts my normal 18% discount up to 25% off if you use code ZTT18 and I'll have that linked at the top of the description. They not only have Windows keys but also a ton of other stuff such as Office and even game keys for platforms like Steam, Origin, and Uplay and they even have console stuff too like PSN and Xbox prepaid cards as well. Activating Windows is super simple and only takes like 3 minutes total so activate Windows today and remove that nasty watermark and don't forget to use ZTT18 ZTT18 for 25% off. All right, so jumping straight into the parts list, we have yet again the Ryzen 5 3600, and just in case you thought I would start featuring something else because you keep seeing this over and over again, think again, because I just bought another stack of them. Well, it's Groundhog Day. Again? These six core and 12 threaded beasts that launched back in 2019 are priced to performance monsters here in 2023 going into 2024. And since they're priced between 60 to $66 on AliExpress, I've been buying a ton of them. There simply just isn't a better $60 used CPU that you can find on the marketplaces, at least this readily available. And you can pair the 3600 with some pretty powerful GPUs. Now, one thing to note is that I do always talk highly about AliExpress as you guys know, but this stack of 3600s that I bought recently recently all came with a couple of bent pins and it's the first time that this has ever happened to me. I should have recorded it, but Sam told me that every single CPU in that stack had at least a couple of bent pins, but he was easily able to quickly fix them all and we did stress test them and none of them have an issue, but it is something to be concerned about. Now I've been purchasing a ton of PC components from AliExpress over the years. Honestly, most of them are in fact CPUs and we've never seen this before, like I said. It never happened. I have a feeling that we just got unlucky this time because as you guys know, when you buy a bunch of these CPUs from AliExpress, they're coming from China over here on a boat, so some things are bound to happen. Good thing they're all working now though, so it's not a huge deal, but to cool this 3600, I'm of course using the stock cooler, and here's where our underrated color scheme comes into play. Now as a quick note, when you do buy CPUs from AliExpress, they sometimes don't come with the coolers. I have a bunch of them from previous projects, so it's not a big deal to me, but keep that in mind if you're copying this at home. But yeah, back to this color scheme, usually when I paint these stock Ryzen coolers I go with my typical white or sometimes red theme, but it's been a really long time since I went with this blue. Back on Flippin' Friday episode 9, where it was so long ago that I was basically vlogging and holding the camera myself, I did this exact same thing and I loved how this turned out so much and I just haven't gotten around to doing this again. The blue color from this Rust-Oleum spray paint matches near perfectly with the Formula Mod blue extensions that we used, and these are the exact extensions that I used in that previous build as well. Whenever I find a can of spray paint that matches perfectly with other components that you can easily buy, I always try to remember it because whenever you're guessing on the shades of color, if you accidentally mess up, you could potentially have a very ugly looking gaming PC. The other component that I matched perfectly was the RAM, and this is the Silicone Power 2x8 gigabyte DDR4 kit that's clocked at 3200 megahertz. If you've used PC Part Picker before, chances are you've seen this kit a lot because it's almost always the absolute dirt cheapest kit that you can find, so it's always up towards the top, and in any other build, it would indeed be pretty ugly, but in our build, it looks stunning. When you combine the CPU cooler, RAM, and cable extensions, it all just looks so clean, and the only other thing it needs is some RGB, and we of course got that covered with our case. This is the Sama ARGB Q5, which is a budget micro ATX unit, and this was on yet another crazy ZTT deals sale down to just 50 bucks. If you don't already know, we post the best PC hardware deals almost every single day in our ZTT Discord server. It's linked in the description along with everything else I'm talking about, and you specifically need to keep your eyes on this ZTT deals channel. Lots of PC flippers in our community have been purchasing this case lately because the overall all black layout is super clean, but it also comes pre-installed with three ARGB fans, and as you would expect, the blue color matches up perfectly. I'm in love with how this entire color scheme comes together, but there are a couple of parts that we haven't talked about yet, so let's keep moving on. The motherboard I went with for the 3600 is the Gigabyte A520M S2H, yet another ZTT deal that a lot of us took advantage of when it was on sale down to 50 bucks. Now, this motherboard is not great in terms of features, future-proofing, and obviously not overclocking, but for a maximum price to performance AM4 build, it's definitely 
a great sweet spot. 50 bucks is really hard to beat, especially when we're talking about a brand new AM4 motherboard. When we started filming the B-roll, we did actually notice yet another sneaky red stain on the motherboard, and this quite possibly could be our third PC component this year that shipped to us with someone else's blood. I have no idea why this keeps happening to us. Why does this keep happening to me? Let me know in the comment section if you think this is actually blood or something else. Moving on though, the SSD I got was on a decent sale. This is the Clev Kraz C710, and this is indeed another throwback on the ZTT YouTube channel. There was a point in time a few months ago where these 500 gigabyte models were selling for like $21 or something, which was way cheaper than any other model. I remember buying like a stack of 20 of them back then, and in every single ZTT video, all of my builds were featuring them for like three or four months. Now, this one terabyte model was down to $40, which is still pretty pretty solid, but if you're trying to copy this build, don't feel compelled to use this exact one. Just go with whatever one terabyte drive you can find a good deal on. Next up, we have the power supply, and this is another MSI A550BM, which I scooped up for $50 brand new on Amazon. These are tier C rated, so pretty much exactly what you want for a budget build. I don't really feel the need to spend more money on a tier B at this price range, but that's obviously up to you. Whatever you do, just make sure you consult the PSU tier list and get something that's tier A, B, or C. And finally, the last component we have that I haven't talked about yet is the graphics card, and man, I am actually emotionally attached to this, and I can't believe that I put it in a build and I'm gonna be selling this already so soon. Which, by the way, per usual, we'll be selling this on our monthly drop on January 1st over on zttbuilds.com slash drops. Keep your eyes peeled for that. But yeah, this here is the EVGA GTX 1080 Ti, and I grabbed this off Mercari for $183. The average price of 1080 Ti's has come down a bit since I purchased it, but it's still not a terrible deal. But what's crazy is the price to performance here. If you don't already know, the GTX 1080 Ti is about on par with an RTX 3060, which is pretty crazy for an Nvidia card at this price point. Now, of course, if you've been following ZTT at all this year, then you'll already know that the AMD RX 5700 XT is also on par with the RTX 3060, and that card can be found for much cheaper at around $120 to $140. But if you're specifically looking for an Nvidia GPU around this price point, then the 1080 Ti may actually be a good idea for you, but if all you care about is raw price to performance FPS numbers, then I personally recommend recommend the 5700 XT. I've proven time and time again that the Ryzen 5 3600 paired with the 5700 XT is the peak of used price to performance builds right now, but I went with the 1080 Ti this time not just to mix things up and keep the channel fresh, but also because of how much this card means to me. As most of you guys know, I was in the Air Force for eight years, and during that time, I did two deployments out to the Middle East, and both times when I came back from those deployments, I built myself a very nice gaming PC. When service members are deployed, they usually end up coming back with a a whole lot of disposable income because you're not spending any money while you're out there, obviously, and you're also getting paid a ton of extra money if you're in a hostile fire or combat zone. So whenever you're deployed out there raking in all this extra money, the number one thought that you have, minus missing your family and your dog and all that stuff, is how am I gonna spend this money whenever I get back home? As you can expect, I was planning a high-end gaming PC build during both my deployments. Most people were buying cars or things for their house and whatnot, but after my first one in 2014, I built a rig with the Intel i7-47 790K and an MSI GTX 980, but after my second deployment is when I used the Intel i7 8700K and this EVGA GTX 1080 Ti. I'll have a link to both of these YouTube videos down below, by the way, which you just saw, but please don't watch them. They're pretty bad. I'm also not sure why one of my friends made this meme of my wife and I, but it's spot on accurate. Now, just so you know, I am not the type of person that can easily buy things for myself. I'll spend all kinds of money on my kids or in this business here to improve our efficiencies, but when it comes to buying things just for myself, I usually struggle. Purchasing the very top of the line card was a huge deal for me at the time. And honestly, I probably debated for like 90% of the time I was out there during that deployment. But I made the purchase anyway, and I remember coming home to all of the parts boxes, and I couldn't wait to build this PC. Looking back on it, it's honestly one of my ugliest looking builds because my aesthetic game just wasn't dialed in back then. But yeah, that's why this GPU is so special to me. And when I saw it for sale on Mercari, I just had to buy it. It's honestly a pretty clean GPU by itself, even without a backstory, because this backplate and fan design is super clean. These look so much better than the weird see-through plastic shroud and little E logo fan designs that they eventually gravitated towards. Those are super ugly. But yeah, with all that being said, here's what the final parts list is looking like, and I ended up paying $492 for everything, and honestly, this would probably make for a pretty decent flip build if you were interested in that route as well. You'd have to advertise that the 1080 Ti performs like a 3060 since most people won't know that off the top of their heads, but let's check out these benchmarks for ourselves to see what I'm talking about. First up, we tested 3 Mark's Time Spy, and 
and we got a score of 9,182, which is super impressive for a sub $500 bill. For a couple of reference points, my most recent $750 brand new gaming PC that we built for Modern Warfare 3 only scored a bit higher than that with 10,195, and that was rocking a Ryzen 5 5600 and an RTX 4060. We're getting way more price to performance here with the used hardware, obviously. And for my recent $450 used build where I was combating Elijah's PC lab, that one had the same Ryzen 5 3600, but with the RX 5700 XT, and that scored just a bit lower at 8,999. After that, we jumped into some more games, and in Modern Warfare 3, using 1080p and balance settings, I got an FPS average of 110. Cyberpunk 2077 and the new 2.0 update was up after that, and when using the built-in benchmarking tool in 1080p medium settings, we got 78 FPS. We also used the built-in benchmarking tool for Assassin's Creed Mirage, and in 1080p high settings, we got 82 FPS. And our last one here with footage is Forza Horizon 5, and here we could crank up to high settings in 1080p, and we got 111 FPS. Here's all the other games that we tested, and again, with the exception of Starfield, we are running every game very easily in 1080p medium to high settings, and this 1080 Ti proves that it's still a champ here in 2023 going into 2024. We also tested the thermals real quickly with a 10 minute CPU and GPU stress test using Cinebench 2024, and our max CPU temperature only got up to 78 degrees, while the GPU only got up to 72. Both are very impressive results, but not surprising because our cooling and case setup here is pretty good. So if you're ready to put together your own $500 gaming PC, honestly, this is exactly how I would do it. But if you are looking for just a little bit different way to do it, then feel free to click the video that's on the screen now.